you know, Martin, there's only four or five of us here and not the person who's running the agenda after you're done. So. Yeah, well, I'm going to start talking because there's a bunch of administrative to run through. Okay, sounds good. Um, okay, welcome to our uh, interim. This is the note well. Uh, as always, it talks about the intellectual property implications of you participating and discusses how to conduct yourself properly as an ITF participant. If you have not read it, please read it. Um, we are using Zulip for chat. Uh, I think you can access that. In fact, you can access that through the data tracker page for this meeting. Um, if you have not already, go to the notes uh, and sign the blue sheet. There's a link to this in the Google Meet chat and in the Zulip chat. If somebody has a problem either accessing either of those, please let me know and I will get you the link. So uh, Ian just got back from vacation um, last night, so we don't have a more precise agenda. However, um, I could certainly talk about the PCR. I think we're down to the point where there's a few things that need discussion. And um, so that's at least one thing. Um, but other than that, the agenda is, as it always is, we need a scribe. Okay, of the three non-chairs in the room, who has been who has taken notes the farthest in the past? I can do it. Oh, thanks. Thank Daniel. you, Daniel. I think Alan can actually get you chocolate <laughs> given the logistics. <laughs> How are you not in the same room? I, I, you know, looking at the background, I think you might be in the room, like on the other side of this wall. But oh, okay, that's probably. <laughs> I wonder if no one can get a conference room over there. Put a knock on the wall. Um. All right. Cool. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Um, okay, and then uh, uh, as you probably saw, um, we have now formally announced the next hybrid interim. It will be one through three October. First day is interop, two and three are issue discussion, and it will be um, at Akamai in Cambridge. Thank you, Will, for arranging that. This is uh, literally across the street. Well, literally across the street from the Google campus we were at last fall, um, although not across the street from the building that we were in, I guess, but it's like two blocks from the building we were in. So it uh, should not be hard for you to find if you were able to make it to that interim. Um, but there, so yeah, so uh, we'll already set out some early instructions for that. Uh, I think he'll be collecting names at a later date um, in whatever method is useful for him. Want. That runs out of that, so I will um, I guess I'll start talking about peeps. Does everyone sign the the blue sheets that's in the call? Probably not. Let's just keep reminding people go sign the blue sheets if you haven't signed the blue sheets. okay. Um, to us. Okay. Um, you want to just, I mean, peeps is fine, but you want to just walk through the PRs that are open and see if any are. Yeah, well, why don't we do that? Um, the PRs are the issues that were assigned already. I'm sort of, do you want to look, if we walk through the PRs, we can maybe land some, who knows, or at least like dispose of some. Do we want to do that without, oh, there's, there's Ian. Is that Ian? I can't see because the. My room was being difficult. I apologize. Okay. I'm, there was a, there was like a bubble superimposed on your face. So I couldn't see who, if it was you or Victor. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, so, uh, well, Ian, now that you're here, I'll, I'll let you drive. But um, the I, I did want to mention that I thought the Peeps PR was ready for discussion um, because there's about three items that I think Suhas and I have like slightly different preferences and I think we just need a little more input. I'm happy to land whatever the group says. Okay. Uh, we I'd can like talk to, about something else if that's a higher priority to you. No, I'd like to, 
I think the peeps discussion has been around for long enough that I would like to proceed forward with it. Uh, do you want to? Do you want some I'll, I'll, since I'm already here, I'll drive this one and then I'll hand the okay. ball back to you. Right. Okay, so uh, thanks for those of you who reviewed this and, and had, a, had a comment about it. There were some good comments. All right, so uh, there's almost nothing about your polls that I'm going to lie down on the road about. Um, but uh, there's some mild preference issues here where Suhas has one opinion and I have a different opinion and just like whatever the sense the group is, I'm happy to go along with. So there's one. Um, uh, let's see. How can we do this? So there's one one item here where uh, essentially in the discussion of peeps, there's some normative language in there that provides a, a recommended capital letters uh, way to assign objects to peeps, which basically just talks about the dependencies between objects. And and um, I, I think that the rule is like you don't want to, you know, if object B is dependent on object A, you can put them in in peeps together. But if like C and B are both dependent on A, but not dependent on each other, then either B or C should be. Uh, in a separate peep, and then given all that, ideally you would want to put, um, you know, use as many as few peeps as possible while being consistent with that for for resource reasons. Uh, and then, of course, that's just that's just basically that is a should. Um, there's a bunch of reasons you might do that. You may not be sort of aware of the the prior relationships that are going to develop a priori. Uh, I don't know if I can call it the text without uh, messing up my losing my place here. Uh, I probably can. Maybe there we go. Ah, here it is. Okay, so here three thirty six to whatever. Um, so there's a bunch of rules here about this, and um, and there are a lot of reasons you might not do this. Like you just want to have a simple implementation. You may have knowledge that like you're very very stream constrained. And you want to like just throw a bunch of things together in one peep, even though they're not really dependent on each other. Or maybe you just don't really know. It a priori what the dependencies are going to be and you just and it's just hard for you to do it so there's a lot of escapes here um sue haas's preference i think i can say is like why even have like normative language just let's say like you can do whatever you want however here's like an example of a way to do this that is smart so this is a very small practical difference but uh just editorially i would like to get a sense of what people would prefer should we have a normative should or should we just sort of give no guidance then have an example that is sensible Mo. I would be okay with some very brief normative guidance, but I don't think we should mention dependencies anywhere. I think we should just mention in order delivery um, because that, that follows better the semantics of the transport. When you talk about dependencies, those are application level semantics. And, um, you know, there may be different levels of dependencies. And so I would avoid the word dependency and just stick with the transport level in order delivery. Um, and if it's going to be normative, I would only have like one little sentence about, you know, you should put things for in order delivery in the same peep. I wouldn't go on and on about examples and um, use cases. Okay. Um, who is next in the queue? Um, I've got too many screens open. Alan, can you manage the queue? Okay. Uh, 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 th thanks, Martin, for the PR. And I, I agree. I agree with Mo in the sense that um, we, we we need to identify what peep is for basically it's it identifies a priority domain priority construct for transport which is like mapping which which it gets by mapping it to the it to the quick stream and also um because of the stream as most it, it becomes in order delivery uh, and you want if you want if the application wants those two things to be self contained and that's that's when they they create a peep and put things into the peep and having few examples of that, like what you had when you presented about uh, multiple priorities within a group is it good um and, and well, well, wait, so, 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 so we'll get there on the priorities. Okay. First, I okay, want to talk sure. about the. Okay. Yeah, so, so, yeah. That should be my okay. uh, input as well. Okay. Uh, whoever's next. Uh, Victor. Victor. I feel like I don't quite understand what is the the should being proposed here. Could 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 you elaborate? So it it is a like a a sensible strategy for i mean so given that generally applications will be dealing with um you know some objects that are dependent on each other uh that, that therefore can be delivered in order um that may or may not have different priorities that have you know where like 
you have a potentially complicated dependency tree. Like, how can you map that into peeps in a sensible way that minimizes the number of streams without doing any head of line blocking? So this is just kind of reason, just doing the reasoning for people so they can do that without like having an in-depth knowledge of of quick streams. Now, people are pushing back about um, whether or not we should talk about uh, dependencies rather than order delivery. Um, I mean, we can we can talk about that too. But that's uh, what is did that answer your question, Victor? Uh, is this a should for? It's a should. Uh, now, is this a should for authors or for implementers of MOQT or for applications building on top of it? Uh, for applications. Uh, yeah, if, if this is for applications, I feel like we might justify it and just explain how it's used. I'm, I, I'm not sure should is useful here. Okay. Uh, I think um, I'm next. Um, I, as with my editor hat on, I, I always like less text and less, um, if, unless we need it. Um, and so probably I, I err towards having a little bit less here, maybe than we have today. Um, as an individual, um, I would argue, put the, I, I think this is sort of like my Martin Thompson kind of perspective. Like you don't need a should because a stream does a thing and you just need to describe the thing it does. And it just is like, you can't, like okay. you get what you get. Like, I mean, okay. you don't need to say anything about it should like, it, it just a stream does a certain thing. So like we should describe the thing it does and okay. then say something about how like one might want to use that, but like we don't need any normative language about it. Okay. That's All right. So I, I'm I'm hearing a I mean I'm hearing a strong signal for no normative language. Um so like if that's all you want to say, like you put your hand down. Uh, I will rewrite this to be a little more descriptive and a little less. I mean, Ian, do you think there should be any? Do you think the logic that I have here should still exist in, as an example, or do you want me to kill that as well? I I think an, an example is good. Okay. I'm All right. An example. I mean, cool. I don't know. Then I will I will um, make that change. Uh, okay. There's still some hands up, so let's drain the queue on this. Will. Yeah, I think I'm next. So I want to I want to back up and address the the need for peeps because I, I have read through this PR. A peeps a collection of objects that have a dependency and priority relationship consistent with sharing a quick stream. That seems like an application construct. Dependency is purely application based, right? So why yes. do we need to put it into the transport? Why isn't this just a bit in the payload of whatever's sending it? If, if you as an application know that things are better suited to transmission on a stream because of reliability and uh, delivery order, then put them in a stream. But why do we need a bit in the transport signaling this? And the, the because, language doesn't motivate why. Well, because that's because that's how the because. OK, so 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 first of all, the API must have so the transport API needs this notion to allow applications to map to streams, right? We agree on that. No, I disagree on that. You can you can map to a stream automatically, right? You just send you create a stream. What you put in the payload of that stream is is up but, to but you. the transport opens the streams. Right. But why do we need to know about the relationship of the payload object when we're opening the stream? You don't. We have we have syntax to tell to say I, I want to forward this as a stream, or no, no, we don't because because you can choose that an entire track has either group per stream, uh, object per stream, or track per stream, or and then there's the diagram thing which doesn't use streams, right? So I, there's no way for there's no way to um, I, I mean unless you have complete control over groups as a you know purely as a transport construct. And you'd remove any sort of meaning for it in terms of temporal timing or anything, which I don't think is where we are. Then there's no way to specify within a group that two things should be on separate streams unless you go to full object per stream, which people think is ugly. If I may jump real quick, uh, Will missed, uh, I think, your presentation, Martin, about, about the sc temporal scalability case and how it's hard to solve today without going all the way to object per stream. So Will, if you haven't looked at that, look at the look at the notes or presentation from the last IETF where Martin showed that use case and how streams can help that case. Basically, you're forced into object per per stream um, if you want to do temporal scalability with the enhancement layer not dependent on the base layer and the base layer not dependent on the enhancement layer. Um, so the, 
it okay. helps to, to make that work. But if I'm an application and I am forced to object per stream and I control the payload of that stream, then how would I construct it? What's my what's the use case where I need to put lots of objects in the same stream versus one object? So I think everyone can see that that like all use cases are completely solvable with with object per stream. But the general sense is that that is um, quite cumbersome. OK, so this is just an additional this is in lieu of an additional mode where we could say take these objects and, and place them in a stream. This is an additional mode that says take these objects and put them in a stream. Okay. Now, I've, I've chosen to, to like try to reduce the number of forwarding preferences by like subsuming group per stream and object per stream into this rather than, I mean, you could have five forwarding preferences. I've chosen to do three, but that that's a small difference that I, I'm persuadable on. If people really want to have these different spellings, that's fine. Victor. I just heard someone say that dependencies are not a transport concept. Uh, I find this extremely odd claim. The transport obviously has to somehow know some form about dependencies some way or other, because otherwise it will send objects that are useless and out of order that the application would not prefer. Now, the question, of course, is how do we communicate that? And we usually, and the PEEPS proposal is like, you tell the, great, the MOQ stacks that those things belong on the same stream, so it would put them in order. And there might be potential implications that like, they're dependent, they're not necessarily dependent, but like, if they're dependent, this will give you what you want. And I feel like this is a useful property. No. Uh, to answer Victor real quick, uh, I don't think dependencies are proper here because dependencies mean a lot to the application. For example, in video, the enhancement layer is dependent on the base layer, but we're not going to encode that in the peeps. The peeps are not going to say that this is dependent on that. The peeps are just going to say, I want these things delivered in order. The dependency graph for an application is much, much more complex than one linear thing. So I think sticking with in order is the right way because for the transport, just the linear in order dependency is all that we care about. The higher level application dependencies are a much more complicated graph and we don't need to try to boil that ocean. Um, but before Will or Victor said anything, I was gonna jump in to answer the normative text question. I think we could have a very simple one-liner normative text that says within a group, um, objects to be delivered in order should be placed in the same peep and those that can be delivered out of order may be delivered in, in may be placed in separate peeps. I think it could be that simple. Um, and I don't know if you need motivating examples necessarily for that. I think it's kind of clear, um, especially once you realize the transport construct underneath it is a stream. I think that simple normative text would be enough. So Mo, like I, I'm not, I don't, I don't think you're, so I'm a little concerned that I'm a little concerned that, I mean, it's true that strictly speaking, you can say, look, quick streams do this and you can reason about it from there. I, I, I'm i concerned people may not be used to thinking about quick streams as a tool and just make, just make it really clear, like what the intent is by talking about dependencies and when dependencies imply that something should be on the same stream when they shouldn't be might be helpful. But, but I mean, I think we're just talking about an example. So at this point, so I think that's fine. Um, do you like insist on having normative language because it seems like the sense of the room is that we not i don't insist but i, I think it could be helpful i think a, s a simple one-liner normative language may be helpful okay to people when to use a peep uh next in the queue yeah i just as an individual i mean i think i i think the way ian put it earlier is the what i think makes sense is like when you put something on a stream it's going to get delivered in order so that's what's going to happen. If you put two things in the same peep, the one with the higher object ID is going to come later and we can describe that that's what's going to happen. And I think an example of why that might be good that shows how Apple, here's an application that has dependencies and it uses it maps those to in order by placing them in the same peep with yeah. sequential object IDs. Like 
that's fine. But we don't need to say like what you should or shouldn't do because what happens if you don't? Well, your app's going to suck. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. I, I think, again, I have a pretty strong signal, I think, to to go where I'm going, although it's not unanimous. Uh, who's next in the queue? Uh, Sue us. Um, I'll, I'll be quick here. I place one to Ian and Alan. Um, I, I think like the, the object model defines today like what a group is like a sync point and what peeps in a group basically uh, a, a delivery construct in, in the sense that whatever you put in the peep will be delivered together in order to be, because it's directly mapped one on one to the quick stream. Um, having describing those properties and a non normative example like how someone can use peep is always should be should be good enough. Okay, uh, Ian. Um, uh, yeah, my, my last comment is um, I think there's, there is one number of thing that I think is in there, but like we we want to keep, which is the object IDs do have to increase. Is, is that correct? Uh, I, I I think I wrote that. I, if I didn't, I should have. Okay. Well, we should. I just want to make sure everyone's like we talked about no normative language, and I'm like, except like we keep saying that you know object IDs need to increase, and I think we all agree on that. But I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So, I mean, we can even make the comment to make. So I'll double check that. Case. Not do if we want. I don't know. We can use the delta encoding if you if you want to like force people to do that. Okay. Um, moving along to the next uh, minor issue. Um, so you suggest like so Ian suggested having um, allowing peeps in a datagram or maybe multiple peeps in a datagram. I'm not or rather multiple objects in a datagram if they fit. Um, I, I think. Like so, my response, as you can see there, Ian was like, I, I think that's opening a whole other change here, and that like forwarding preferences being immutable uh, or not. And I, I thought maybe we should not like go there in this PR. Is that cool with you? I'm fine with that. Sure. All right. I'm fine with Thank you. Does anyone yeah. else have anything they need to say about this? Let's see if there's anything open here. Um, Did you address? I think you said, I say you skipped over my comment, which I'm remembering had to do about finishing. Oh, I so there, like, there, I, I did add an end of peep object. Ah, okay. Sorry, I scanned um, here quickly, but and that has that has kind of weird dependency rules, <laughs> which I guess I need to rewrite now that we're like abolishing dependency from from the draft. Um, but we'll get there. Um, oh, so, but to summarize, to like prevent stream inflation, uh, an end of peep object should go in the same peep, uh, obviously, a end of, a, a missing object should go in the same peep as the previous object ID, and a um, end of group object goes at the end of all the, all the other objects in there, including any end of peep objects. And it goes with the it goes with the earlier, the, the the immediately preceding the the end of group object goes at the uh, is in the same peep with the with the the next highest object ID just to like minimize the amount of new streams that we're that we're generating. Do, do missing objects need a peep? No, because as I said, they will go they will go in the same peep as the previous object. Okay. I don't think that's actually always true. Um, I think I think they go in order. I think a missing object must come after a lowered numbered object ID. But I would argue that, like, for say you're doing the temporal state scalability thing, if for some reason I don't know the 60 FPS uh track had like some missing objects and you wanted to communicate that um and they're permanently missing for whatever reason i don't know why they're permanently missing um then then you might want to put that on the 60 in the 60 fps peep um and so you know what imagine magic numbering but like imagine it's like one two four type thing like you know the the missing objects might be like 16 20 and 24 or something i don't know right like they they might not come immediately after the previous number they they i don't know does that make sense or am i thinking about this too hard um 
Okay, like if if someone has a like an ultimate proposal for how how this thing should work, um, in terms of just like how to how to assign these uh, non-normal objects to to peeps, um, just just put it put it in the PR. <laughs> like, uh, right, I don't I, I don't want to design that in real time. Right. Um, I'm not trying to suggest anything complicated. I'm just kind of saying like I don't I don't think there are a ton of constraints on what you can plausibly do. Yeah. So like we can we can just make it work in the PR. That's fine. Suhas. Yeah, uh, I'm happy to uh, provide some comments on the PR, uh, or it, it can be separate PR video offered because to keep this PR focused. Um, I think my point is that like if there's only one peep, let's take a, a, a base case, and if if you're not able to send a particular object for water, if detail expired at water, then whatever you do in that case, you do the same thing when you're doing with peep too. And I, I think we need to keep the logic similar. Either you're doing it one peep per entire group or three peeps per entire group. The logic will say the same because it's the object status that's that matters. Uh, I guess I didn't understand the end there. Um, three peeps per group. Wait, what? I'm saying like like what, what the, the, the application that's going to insert the next object. It either it can insert that object into the underlying transport. It can be like one peep in a group, or it can be a uh, multiple peeps. Whichever, however, it's trying to put the next object, send the next object onto the transport. Either it can send that object. Or it that the object detail expired or whatever it could not send that object or the object does not exist because it was never produced whatever. So whatever logic that it does today in the, in the, in the draft uh, for groups any of the forwarding mode the same thing would apply to peep too. I it, it has to make a, cho a choice. How do I put this object onto the, the peep? The problem with that Suhas is that the current logic says you use the group you look at the preference and the group ID to know what to do. And here you need to look at you would have to look at the peep ID and the question. So that's the question. Does this does the status message need an application provided peep ID in order to know where to put it? Or can it is it okay to just stick it anywhere? It doesn't matter what its peep is. Like if, if you take the 30 FPS and 60 FPS, uh, FPS example, then as an example, right? The 60 FPS objects will go in a different peep. And that on an, an object that's either expired or missing is part of 60 FPS, it'll go. It has to be communicated in that peep. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, but it it means that you have to cache this. Like the peep ID needs to be remembered. Like you need to know the peep ID for the for the object that's gone. Right. I thought the canonical object field was updated to in include that. Maybe that's what I'm. No, I think you're right. Anyway, I, I'm I'm out of queue. But okay, Mo. Unless I missed it, I didn't see anything in the PR that mentioned any semantics for the peep ID. So it's just literally anything as long as it's unique per. Peep. It's not it zero, one, two. Uh, yeah, I, that's what the PR currently says. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Um, because there, that's another issue. Okay. So um, I can't remember where this. Okay. So this was a different question. So currently there's. Uh, hey, it, Will, it, had, Will, Will had a hand. I don't know oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Will. So I, yeah. It concerns naming, right? Peep is an intentionally obtuse term, so we don't avoid. Uh, overloading stream or something like that. But is the intent to merge this with the word peep in, or are we going to bike shed another name before we do that? Um, if we're going to bike shed, I wanted to throw one into that. Let, let's let's keep our bike shed for later, not now. So, uh, so just, I, I would actually like to merge it as so and then have a separate bike shed. And I, I would hate to publish an RSC that had peeps in it, to be clear. Um, I think I think we could survive with this for some amount of time, and then like whenever someone has the energy to like forge a consensus on the name, I, I honestly don't care what the name is. Um, so like uh, like the second I land this, if you want to go fight for your term, like that would be great, and I will support you. I'll support whatever the group wants to do there. Suhas. Suhas. I think I think uh, on Will's point, before we do zero five, we need to replace peep with the name. I don't want it to be solved right now, but a zero five. You don't, you don't want the word peep in your code? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Am um, I alone? I want to ship it with peep. I think we should mint a brand new thing. <laughs> okay, next issue here. Um, so the, it, what the PR currently says is in the object metadata, you have a, a, uh, a priority number as currently exists, and you also have a peep ID. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's good, Victor. Uh, those of you who are joining late, please sign the um, the blue sheets. Uh, there's a link in both the Zulip and in the Google Meet chat. It's a pinned message. You should be able to see it. 
Um, so I would like, so um, again, so there, there's a, there's a peep ID and there's a, um, there's a separate uh, priority number. Now the, 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 the reasoning for that is, so that supports a case where two peeps have identical priority. Um, so I, I have no opinion on whether or not this should be the case, but I decided to be maximally general. Um, Sue has made the argument that peeps should not be able to have the same priority, in which case you could then also save, some, this is a second order concern, we could save some bits by having the peep ID also be a priority number that in the context of the group. Uh, its Whoa. scope would still be of the group, so it wouldn't create any sort of cross-group dependencies or, or, or things. But I just, if people if people don't see a use case for peeps having the same priority, then 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 we're done here and we can go with that. Victor or whoever yeah, was first. <laughs> Um, I think I, I think we have a use case here. If I've, if it's been correctly explained to me, uh, that would necessitate like two peeps of equal priority. So the, I think what some team wants to do is they want to encode a stream, and they essentially have like two chains. They're like two independent encoding. So they have like basically like two iframes, and then like the p frames chained off them, and they, they alternate. They're basically like if one gets lost, then the other one's still there, but they are equal priority. So like there's so I think there's a use case that says like yes I have these are the things I want delivered in order this is the set of dependencies but I don't care A or B gets there first like it's fine. Okay, whoever's next? Yes, that's me. I'm a huge fan of things never having the same priority. So I'm in favor of using peep ID as a priority. Next. I think it's me. Uh, for like one clarification question I had for Alan is that like wouldn't this couldn't that problem be solved with two different tracks? Um, as that way you can get independence of they be delivered and you can get rather than overloading the people with that kind of semantic. On on the other hand, like my comment here was like um, because peep is mapped one on one to stream, so that defines a priority in a way. Uh, so if if something things. Of like objects are the thing that are cached and distributed uh, in mock pop sub, and objects have the priority. So all the objects that have the same priority will go onto the same peep within a group, and that kind of gives a logical mapping. Um, I, I I really want to understand better the use case where you can have uh, two objects with uh, same priority but still use two different peeps. Um, maybe Alan, you, you, if you can explain that use case better, that would be helpful. Uh, so, I mean, I think generally what you're saying, like, could it be a different track? Uh, I think it, it, it is, there's a number of things, like the way MOQ is currently designed is that there are many different degrees of freedom for application developers. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, and I don't know, we may find that that was a great choice and people like thousands of flowers will bloom. And we may find later that we we like left it like way too general and application. People go to write an application. They're like, what should I do? So um, at the moment, I there, like why somebody wants to make something a track might be because or versus two tracks. I like I'm having a hard time right now art articulating like what helps me make that decision. But I don't necessarily think like logically it's the same content. It's coming out of the same video encoder. So they're like, this is one track. I'm just like popping them into different peeps. And I think that maybe there's like all what to what Victor said and about I don't like having two things have the same priority. The way we define priority today is like two things can have the same priority, but we just keep defining tiebreakers, which really means there kind of isn't a case where two things have the same, like you could, for example, in stream per object today, you know, two objects with the same priority, but then we tie, we break the tie with the object ID. So perhaps peeps have a place there mm -hmm. uh, where they too, they can't have the same priority and then the lower peep wins. Um, anyway. So Alan, I think you're the holdout for like, or like the closest thing to a holdout on like, just always having a different priority, but it sounds like you just convinced yourself that would be okay um no well i i don't i think there's a second question so your second order question i think feeds back into the first order question so the second order question is like if people priority the same should we only have one field but the problem yeah. is one's a variant and has many has two to the 62 combinations and the other one is an 8-bit field which means they're probably not going to get collapsed into a single thing because you might want to have lots of peeps but you have a smaller number of priority choices and i think that mm -hmm. that necessarily shows you that uh you might have to have two peeps with the same priority 
it, like, if, if what happens if I have 257 peeps? Yeah, in, the, in, in, uh, yes, uh, in, in, in that case, you, if, uh, like at least the, the, the idea here is that, like, again, I go back to the object model. We have an object that's been distributed, and objects have the properties. One of the property of an object is a priority, and we are taking that object and distributing the transport mechanism, deciding the transport mechanism to send it out. Uh, if our, our eventual transport mechanism is for forgetting about the data gaps is streams. So quick streams, uh, what are the uh, object the priorities that, that if if ten objects have the same priority, then they and and you expect them to uh, be delivered in certain with certain requirements of in order delivery, they all have to go onto the same quick stream at the end. And PIP is the other name for the quick stream that we are trying to put it in the object model and say um, everything that I put in the in, in this PIP has uh, one on one mapping to quick stream, and hence everything that you put should also have respect the priority of the thing that you put in. On the other hand, having said that, like Alan Stewart point, can you have two different um, peeps with the same priority? I, I don't see why it shouldn't be the case. I can't think of a use case, but um, but I still like to keep the priority of the object, which is like U int eight at the level of object, rather than merging that with the peep ID. Okay, so I, I think if we're going to have two different things and they're going to have two different sizes then you've necessarily created a case where you can have two peeps with the same priority. So I think it, yeah. it, it, the, only, the only thing you're asking is like, should we put a must in there that says don't do something? But they might have to if they have 257. Like, mm -hmm. So you might as well just allow it and be general. And if you don't have use case, fine. Well, like, I mean, so, uh, yeah, so I mean, I think you made some good points, Alan. Like, I think the only alternative to what is currently in the draft is to actually collapse it into a single number. And there, therefore, you could only have two hundred fifty-six peeps in a in a group. Or we revisit um, how big a priority is, right? Um, um, which would which would kind of force people just based on what they could express. Um, I mean, two hundred fifty-six streams is a lot, so I don't know. I could live with either way, but it sounds like people are. I think we're driving back towards no change in the document, Victor. I mean, I'm confused. We already do this with like object. Where... Will we use object ID as a tiebreaker, right? Yeah, I think it's fine to say peep ID is a tiebreaker. Yeah, no, this is, if this goes through, we'll, no, we'll just replace object ID with peep ID since objects like peep would be the highest stream thing here, right? Oh, right. Yeah, it's actually, wait a minute. Yeah, I mean, is it right that it's an 8-bit thing? Because we could just... In the same way, yeah, I mean, Victor has a point. If it's a 62-bit number, like object ID, then if that's the tiebreaker, then it's the tiebreaker. And it's nothing to do, it, you, it doesn't, isn't part of the 8-bit, it isn't part of that, like, that that concatenated integer. Yeah, currently, right, right? like, yeah. it's less in practice currently where, like, concatenate priority subscriber, priority publisher, group ID, object ID, and the kind of work, so we could replace object ID with peep ID, and that would still work. Can I just, like, jump in real quick because of a side point, which is that, like, I have closely studied the draft, the priority text, and I do not believe that you can implement the priority queue in the draft by merging the integers together, and I want to see the code that does it, so please publish your code. So, I mean, aren't you negating your point, then, that we're actually not limited to 8 bits of peep ID? Am I... Well, your original point was My like point is that if you want to have more than 256 peeps, you can't use the priority field on the wire, which is 256 bits. All right, so we eliminate the priority field. Yeah, I'm not and, and, to open and that. you just and, and you just use the peep ID. That's which is a variant. I don't so, think people are ready to make priority a 62 bit field, but you can ask that question. Well, I mean, it, it's in the same way that an object ID is object ID, that's different. Anyway, I don't know. Right? Right? The, the object ID is not the priority. It's, 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 it's object ID is that if you have two objects with the same priority, then it's a tiebreaker to pick which object to send next. I agree with Alan that we can make peep ID as a tiebreaker. So within a, within a group, you, if you have multiple peeps, you grow, go with it, the order of the peep IDs. And as a tiebreaker, if there are multiple peeps with the same priority, I think, I think that that's totally fine. 
but merging making this uh, priority uh, 60, 62 bit or 64 bit whatever it is it, it does not really map to many of the apis in some like at the end the final the, at the network level none of those 62 bits map clearly to anything they are only 6 bits at or 8 bits at that at some values so I, I think using the peep id like what i'm getting to say is if you have multiple peeps in a group and it's supposed and and it, it's like uh, have they have same priority it's totally okay because again you can have multiple quick streams with same priority and quick stream will do some kind of round robin for fashion to send things based on our implementation i think i think that should be fine okay so i think alan i take that to be alan having convinced suhas which is good enough for me i think to like <laughs> to say that we should just leave the the text as is which is where peep id and priority are completely separate things uh, ian uh, i was gonna say like is any is anyone gonna die on the hill that that's like it seems like that's perfectly flexible and it's fine and we don't really know what we're doing to some extent with with these two identifiers but we can just leave them in for now and if it turns out they're totally redundant we'll remove them later okay, i'm going to resolve that little sub conversation i, I think right. it's fine I, I think what somebody said about replacing i think victor said we're replacing object today with peep idea he meant like as the tiebreaker when determining stream priority and i think that is right because like if you're sending if your stream granularity is peep then you have you use the peep ID to determine which peep to send from next, and it, the objects ID and the peep are just ordered based on their own IDs. So I, I think there's a slight update if you didn't already have it there to the to the priority text. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't follow. Uh, okay, I, I will try to construct. I think I need to write down an example. Um, okay. Um, to, I mean, so I, I think I think I think I think as it stands, like. Peeps are relevant. So peeps are carriers of priority, right? Um, in the way the objects used to be. Um, but uh, aside from that, like they don't, I mean, the peep, ID, the peep ID is just a number. It has nothing to do with anything. It's not ordered. Okay. I, as I, it think, you, I think you probably want to make it a tiebreaker, but Victor, go ahead. Yeah, I, I really don't like this. Uh, this is like a very complexity uh, because now I have to keep track of two numbers and there are like weird things with those numbers changing uh, and stuff like that. Uh, also, yeah. Why would those numbers change? Be because if you have two fields, you can change what? Oh, okay. You If you can encode them, so they don't change. But well, so so yeah, so I mean so like the only reason that the peep ID is on the wire is for relays that have some sort of upstream interruption and have to get the rest of the peep in the same session and know those two peeps belong together. That's the only reason that actually exists as a field. Otherwise it would be purely an internal API issue. Caching replay also, yeah. Yeah, I mean, stuff in the middle that has to resend it needs to know that these two things that came on different streams because of a in a, of an interruption have to go out on the same stream. That is literally the only reason that that exists on the wire. OK, so I, I, th I think we ended up on no change. Um, Victor, if you have a concrete proposal, like feel free to put it in the in GitHub or, or like send an email to the list. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of pushback against putting more meaning in the peep ID. Um, OK. So that is that was our actual. So I mean, I, I have a do out here. I'm going to basically rewrite the whole like advice for assigning peeps section, um, and I think that was it. Right? Was there something else that I was going to do? I think everything else is with a no op. Oh, I, I was going to double check ob increase the object ID, but I think I think we're close. Uh, modulo like. Oh, by the way, Will, I I don't I don't want to do it in this meeting, but if you want to set if you want to send something to the list saying I propose this as a name for peeps. And like and like and we magically converge like before we land this PR, I'll make the change, but I don't want to hold it up for that. You're you're being you're muted, Will. Sorry, I don't want to complicate the PR or yeah. No, I mean it, it's easy enough for me to do find but... replace. Like I said, it may be you have a magic term that everybody loves, so just send an email, and if people love it, I'll make the change. But I don't I'll want to fight about my it. term on the issue, and if the bike shed magically resolves, we can do it. Otherwise, we'll debate it. Yeah. All right. Agreed. Mo. 
so I thought I heard that the resolution was the, the peep ID has no semantics at all, but I yes. don't think it's completely right because I think it's still scoped to the group ID, right? Yes, it is. I don't, and I don't remember seeing anything that says whether it's scoped to the group ID. Uh, I'm almost positive that it, that 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 exists, but it does? Um, okay, yeah. I just missed it then. It could be. I mean, I I think I might have added it after a comment. As long as we agree. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yep. Uh, th this uh, is an individual. Like I am still. Un I I don't think that. I do think peep ID. I think we do want it to have a semantic meaning. I think we want it to be replace what we used to use object ID for. I will send an example because I don't. I want to think about it a little bit and like have a thoughtful reason argument why okay. I think that could be the case. But I just want to put a pin there that like because I think if you leave it where like you're using object to determine what the next stream to send is, then you're going to have it's going to greatly complicate your quick API, which does not know where the object boundaries are within a peep. Um, and and how to select different priorities versus like using the peeps themselves. So I think that's, but I, I'll try to write something up. Is okay. So, I, uh, I, I mean, Ellen, I, I think you actually might have just made a really good argument for why we should not allow peeps to have the same priority. Dang it! What? Because <laughs> I think it, I think it makes it a huge, huge pain to implement if you actually want to do it vaguely correctly. If you actually try to order by object ID and you have two things that are interleaved and they're at the same priority and they like one is all the even number objects and one's all the odd number objects, there's no way my quick API can handle that. I mean, not no way, but it's going to be hard. I think that's why. See, what I'm saying there is that you should be you should take out object ID as the as a is involved in the priority selection. At that point, you should be using peep as your priority selection because peep equals stream and quick APIs know how to prioritize streams. Okay. I'll try anyway. I'll try to. I, I, I agree with you, but then I don't understand why we have peep ID and object ID. Sorry, peep ID and priority. They they seem redundant at that point. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, at this this point, it may come down to like they're different sizes, and you may have more of one than another, and therefore you have to be able to too. Okay, I'm not gonna. I, I'm I'm fine with whatever for, for the time being. I mean, we can always clean this up and like make it simpler later if we can figure out oh. how to do that. So, Alan, do, do you are you are you, do you want to be given the time to make a proposal that will make this clear to all of us, um, or should I just move, drive forward and you'll catch you'll clean it up after it's committed? Um, let me take another look. I will add a comment. I mean, I think that, that I mean in my like two minutes of like trying to think about this while having this meeting, my example is like you have two peeps and one has objects one and four, and the other one has objects two and three, like. And you and that all gets jammed down to your quick library. Sure. Uh, so, I, I don't want to pressure you to design this in real time. Anyway, so I'm going to make the changes we've agreed on. I think there's just basically one section to be rewritten. We'll give Alan a, a a a finite amount of time to like think about this <laughs> offline and see what he comes up with. And those are the two do outs we have up to now. And uh, whoever's next in the queue, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say like um, I'm happy to review once once you make those changes. And I I, I, do, I do feel like uh, having uh, the Multiple peeps with same priority, uh, quick streams with some same priority. It's uh, like something like if Alan can explain the use case more, and we can definitely consider that. Um, but I, I, I personally feel that this PR has come to a point where with the changes we have done, we could to land, and we'll definitely change it on some point to make it more clear and fix some of those things. This also gives Will a chance to, if we if we wait for Alan's proposal, it gives Will a chance to do his bike shed, which is exciting. Will, did you? Oh, your hands down. So I'm going to say. I, I, I took Rob. This is probably in the slides that Mo referenced that you wrote. But what are the use cases where peep doesn't correspond with stream? There seems to be a very strong correspondence, right? No, no, they they exactly correspond. Okay. They they are in fact directly mapped to quick streams. The problem so is the word stream means something else in 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 video land, as I understand it. Not I'm not a video guy. And so I just wanted to remove all that baggage to talk about it. If we want to come back to the word stream or Q streams or whatever, that's fine. But uh, I, I don't want to get into the bike shed well, today. That, it makes a difference for the, for the bike shed because we're at the transport level. I think calling it a stream would actually yep. infer a lot of, of its usage. And it's a very simple explanation. Same stream ID, put them in the same stream. Yeah, um, I mean, that, that is exactly what it is. Um, like I said, I, I was I was I was afraid of using words that meant something because my experience at this group is that's like 
group has had the same problem, I think, um, because group has a meaning out in application land and MOQT groups are slightly different and it's created a lot of trouble. So I, I wanted to be ridiculous and it was successful. <laughs> So just for the record, I, I, Martin, I, I don't think anybody has objected to stream at the application level. I don't think okay. we have application level constructs for stream. It's the quick people that would say, oh, wait a minute. You yeah. know, you want to call this, this is a mock stream, not a quick stream. And now you've got two stream IDs. You've got this transport stream ID and you've got the actual quick stream ID. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and, and the, stream, the stream, the, 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 the mock stream ID is like immutable from publisher to, to, to subscriber. And the, the quick stream ID will, will be different for every, um, and enters the web transport stream. So I can't remember how that maps. So this can get this can get ugly. But uh, like yeah. I said, that's why it's a bike shed. So um, I, I I agree. Like because this peep is still an object model thing, and not yeah. I agree. Like they're getting into bike shed right now. Okay. So so the two and a half do outs. I will edit the piece that we discussed. Alan will think about it for a finite amount of time. And if Will and the half do out is if Will has the energy to do a bike shed, we can do a bike shed but we're not gonna hold up the PR on it. And I think I am done. Um, thank you, everyone. Can you use the next five or six minutes productively, Ian? Um, actually, I think so. Um, subscribe namespace is is quite close to being done, it feels like. There's you the have open the ball. question. Uh, there's the open question of whether we still need track name, I think. Alan, is there any feedback you want verbally on that PR or? Are we? Um, so I, to... uh, I haven't. Yeah. So that somebody asked, I think Will maybe asked about like, if we make namespace a tuple, why do we still need name? Um, yeah. At least right. I think my answer to that is like, at least right now, we talk about we you ma a relay matches subscribes to announces based on namespace, not name. <laughs> But easily not. I'd actually like to open an issue on this if you want. I will. I mean, I think the way to do it is maybe just it might be work better if we do it incrementally, right? We're just like, okay, we're going to split namespace yeah. and get the subscribe namespace, and then there's an evolution of it where we elide, we make track name always the last portion of the tuple or something. Um, but I, I, I feel more comfortable. But I'm, I don't know if other. I'm curious what other people think because it blowing up track name feels big, so I wasn't ready to do it right now. <laughs> Do you, do you have thoughts? Would you like to blow up track name now, Will, or is? Yeah, we we don't really. I've thought about it. We, we don't really need track name. When you say we we route it right, we're announcing with this very flexible N thirty two tuple, and and then you subscribe to essentially the the same thing plus one other thing. So really, it's just the concatenation of all of them that defines what the edge relay is filtering incoming content on and in which to push it out. We could do that with the N thirty twos. We don't need this arbitrary track. With, within within a streaming application, it's convenient for us to think of things as track names, but all they are is the last component of the tuple. They don't have to be. They could be the fifth component. It doesn't matter. The application will define that. It'll tell the client or the publisher how to construct the tuples, and that's all it needs to know. Uh, so just I, to clarify the thing you just said, the, the way I've constructed, the tuples aren't named, they're ordered, so you can't have something in the you can't have it a super specific piece in the middle it has to be at the end you, you could change something in the middle it, you, you if you made them names top to provide right. the other com as long as you had some syntax for saying the fifth element i'm replacing is this one right the and way the it has to do is it subscribes to the minimal set that fully describes all the tracks it's produced so that's what it is on how the relay the data structure the relay has to support and the types of queries and filters it has to be able to run on all the announced things so um versus like anyway it, i what you're saying is absolutely possible if we either make them named or you can refer to them by index but i did not in this pr it's like when you say that you want to subscribe namespace you just specify like that you can only start matching from the beginning of the tuple to as many as you specify. So maybe that's, if people want super mega flexibility, we can put that in there, but I, I think yeah. that would work. It would be mega flexible, but it's also easy for just publishing audio and video. You just do the same namespace and give the final, the the tracks there and, it, and the client knows to concatenate those all into this thing we call name. 
So we don't even need to call it namespace anymore. We just call it the name. Well, so there's two different things we're talking about, right? One of them is, do we need namespace and names need to be separate? And then the separate one is like, for matching, do we want to be able to make arbitrary matches or only prefix matches? And right now it's defined as only prefix matches. What do you mean by arbitrary matches? That, like uh, if my tuple is five things long, can I send a uh, subscribe for things for that match three, one, three, yeah, and three, you should, you should not be like I want a star in two and four, like is not uh, a perfect match versus I want to match one, two, and three, and I'll take any fours and fives. It's interesting on the, the, the sparse starring, right? I could see where we star always on the right. Like you just provide the first three and you match anything. Um, and that's probably easier to implement. And I think anyone building applications could, could construct their naming such that they could comply with that schema. Yeah. Uh, um, in the, Mo? Be, Mo and yeah. who else chance? Yeah, we'll I think um, there's several issues, but I think they all revolve around wildcards. The reason we split track into track name into the namespace and name was because we couldn't figure out how to wildcard anything. So we said, okay, now they're two separate blobs. The announce has an implicit wildcard on the name. Um, so if we want to go back and tackle the wildcard situation, that may also help us with wildcard subscribes. Um, and I don't think it's intractable. I don't think it's even that difficult. If we go to the full tuple approach, we can maybe adopt something simple like a null tuple means a wildcard. Um, and so the relay matching algorithm would understand that null tuples means wildcard. Um, unless people have you know some use case where they think you want to differentiate between null and wildcard. Uh, so I, I think we really need to think about what what do wildcards mean and and what do they mean for announcements and what do they mean for subscriptions and what do they mean for matching at the relay. Um, and if we tackle that, I think I think we solve all the use cases. And I think it's doable with the tuples and maybe something as simple as just a null tuple is a wildcard. Um, so I just wanna, one thing you mentioned there was about wildcard subscribe. And so I did go back and mark in that issue that wildcard, like subscribe namespace, which is like wildcard subscribe to announces is one way to solve wildcard subscribe because you'll get all the announces you need and then you can subscribe to the stuff you need. So like it may not be an optimal solution, but it is a solution. Um, uh, Suhas, uh, I, 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 agree, I, please. I, I still, I still support it. Should be a uh, prefix mapping and anything like we do or uh, reg regex like uh, regex like parser is not performant um, at some of the scales and are doing at the hardware layer. Uh, I, 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 I prefer something keeping it simple like how we have defined today. It's like an ordered set of tuples and you do prefix match is gives the flexibility and also some of the things we you want pushed it down at the data data plane. Uh, like DPD, DP, uh, like uh, DPUs or something, those kind of things. Uh, anything else is extremely slow. Um, I was going to say yes. Please keep it prefix match um, from an implementation perspective. I don't want to ponder the other options. Also, prefix matching is kind of how like a bunch of stuff on the internet already works. So like, you know, we have data structures that like are fast for this. So let me maybe just like. I, I'll address any other comments. If people have more comments, please put them on the PR or on the issue. I will try to update the PR to address those like Martin did. And then in our next one, we can we can go through any points one by one. But I think for now, why don't we just say like, right now we're only gonna do prefix match and we're gonna keep namespace and name separate. But I, I'm definitely not opposed to like tackling any of those incrementally after this lands. But I think this is a mechanism which solves it, like enables behavior that we don't have right now. And we can like enhance that subsequently. So that's good to be. Thank you, everyone, for a very productive day. OK. And thank you, Martin, uh, we'll, for updating your PR. Thank you, Daniel, for taking notes. And we will see you in two weeks on oh. September 4th. One note for Will. Um, I think you have some comments on your PR. It seems to be going in a good direction. Um, Which one? I, I have two out there. The extensible object header one? Uh, OK. okay. Maybe uh, if, yeah. if you yeah if you update them, maybe we can talk about next next meeting. I will update it and we can address. Thank you. I was out last week on vacation, so I'm just back this week. Yeah, understood. Me too. Oh, and, and let me just make a quick plug, which is that the chairs and editors have been going through the open issues, closing a bunch. So if something got closed and you think it shouldn't have been, please reopen it. And assigning ones that are ready for PR to write a PR, there are something like 16 outstanding that need a PR that don't have one. So check your assignments and publish PRs and we'll try to land some stuff.
Cool. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.